How did America's first stealth fighter get shot down by a 50-year-old Russian Sam? The Lockheed F-117 Nighthawk was a marvel of its time, often dubbed a stealth fighter, even though it mostly functioned as a precision strike aircraft. Operationally, it was America's first stealth aircraft, although I'm sure somebody's gonna at me in the comments and say, what about the SR-71 Blackbird? Hey, I love the SR-71. It's probably one of my uh, most favorite Air Force jets to look at, followed only by the Raptor. And it's true, the SR-71 flew so fast and so high that out of 4,000 surface-to-air missiles that were shot at it across its 25-year service history, no missile ever caught it. But while the Blackbird did use very early radar-absorbing coatings, it wasn't true stealth in that it didn't have the surface geometry that the U.S. later optimized for the Nighthawk, the Raptor, and the Lightning. Hey friends, Wes here, veteran of the U.S. Army Infantry and the U.S. Air Force, where I worked on surveillance radar on the E3 Sentry, AWACS. Fun fact, someone like me who's 5'10", 5'11", on a good day, can fully stand up inside the rotodome right here. Doesn't look that big, but it is. Okay, the F-117 Nighthawk, an elegant weapon for a more civilized age. Designed from day one to evade radar detection, the Nighthawk was a symbol of U.S. air superiority, capable of slipping through the most sophisticated air defenses to deliver devastating precision-guided munitions. Its sleek, angular design wasn't just for show. It was optimized to deflect radar waves, making it virtually invisible to traditional detection methods. Now, it feels like we've been talking a lot about radar cross-sections on this channel lately, especially in my S-400 takedown. So we're not gonna get into any math today, but this image does a good job of showing you the RCS of some military strike aircraft that were popular at the time of the shootdown. And notice the Nighthawk at the very bottom. It was very, hard to detect. But in March of 1999, during Operation Allied Force in the Kosovo War, the unthinkable happened. A Nighthawk was shot down by a far less technologically advanced Serbian military. The Nighthawk, call sign Vega 31, was being flown by Lieutenant Colonel Daryl Patrick Zelko. As he was performing his sortie, he saw two missiles rise up through the low cloud cover and head straight for his aircraft. The first passed over him close enough to cause buffeting, but didn't detonate. The second missile detonated nearby, its shrapnel and its shockwave causing significant damage to the aircraft and causing it to tumble out of control. The explosion was large enough to be seen from a NATO Boeing KC-135 Stratotanker flying over Bosnia. Zelko ejected and was later rescued by an Air Force pararescue team just minutes before he was about to be captured by Serbian soldiers. This incident became a textbook example of how innovation, adaptation, and a little bit of luck can bring down even the most advanced American weapon systems. Here's how it happened. Exploiting predictable flight patterns. Stealth technology is an incredible asset, but even the most advanced tools can be undermined by predictable human behavior. The Nighthawk relied heavily on its ability to remain undetected, and this meant prioritizing stealth over other defensive measures. For example, it avoided using active electronic countermeasures, such as jamming or radar decoys, which could inadvertently reveal its position. Instead, the Nighthawk's primary defense was its invisibility to radar and its adherence to carefully planned low-risk flight paths designed to bypass known air defenses. But Predictable patterns are kryptonite to any stealth operation. Serbian forces, under the command of Colonel Zoltan Dani, ah, what a great name, Zoltan, recognized this vulnerability. Dani and his team diligently studied NATO's operational tactics and flight routines using both ground observers and intelligence from allied sources. They began to map the likely ingress and egress routes of NATO aircraft, including the stealthy Nighthawk. Over time, they noticed that the aircraft tended to use similar corridors and altitudes during missions to avoid heavily fortified zones. What made Danny's approach so effective was his ability to think asymmetrically. While NATO relied on cutting edge technology, Danny relied on the timeless military principle of observation and adaptation. 
his team realized that stealth doesn't make an aircraft invincible, it just makes it harder to track. Once a pattern is identified, even a ghost in the sky can be anticipated and targeted. Armed with this insight, Danny's forces devised a strategy to turn predictability into a liability. They focused their resources on a narrow band of airspace where the Nighthawk was most likely to appear. This tactical approach teaches us a critical lesson in warfare. Advanced technology can create overconfidence, and even the best systems can falter when they rely too heavily on predictable routines. In this case, the Nighthawk's reliance on carefully plotted flight paths became its Achilles heel, setting the stage for one of the most remarkable ambushes in modern air combat history. Okay, next, modified radar systems. The Serbian forces, despite being equipped with older Soviet-era S-125 Neva, NATO codename SA-3 Goa, surface-to-air missile systems, demonstrated an extraordinary level of ingenuity in adapting this legacy technology to counter the cutting-edge stealth capabilities of the F-117 Nighthawk. While the SA-3 was originally designed in the 1950s for engagements against conventional aircraft, its potential to be modified and used against stealth platforms was unlocked by the creativity and technical expertise of Colonel Zoltan Dani's team. Stealth aircraft like the Nighthawk rely on a combination of faceted surfaces, radar absorbing materials, and geometry optimization to minimize their radar cross-section. This makes them exceptionally hard to detect using the high-frequency radar systems commonly employed by modern militaries. As these systems are designed to pinpoint objects with smaller wavelengths. However, stealth technology has an inherent weakness. It is far less effective against low-frequency radar systems. Low-frequency waves, which have longer wavelengths, interact differently with an aircraft surface, making it harder for stealth designs to fully deflect or absorb the signal. Understanding this vulnerability, Danny and his team modified their SA-3 radar. These modifications included adjusting the radar's pulse repetition frequency, power output, and waveform characteristics to enhance its ability to intermittently detect stealth aircraft. This innovation wasn't just technical, it was strategic. The team recognized that even low-frequency radar wouldn't provide a constant or a clear signal. Stealth technology would still scatter and absorb much of the radar energy, leaving only a fleeting partial return. To work around this, the Serbian operators focused on intermittent detection rather than continuous tracking. Instead of trying to maintain a lock on the F-117 throughout its flight, they aimed to spot it at key moments along its path, just enough to guide their SAMs into position. By exploiting the gaps in stealth technology and leveraging their understanding of radar physics, Danny and his team turned outdated equipment into a tool capable of defeating one of the most advanced aircraft of its era. Okay, next, short radar bursts. Even with modified radar, detection wasn't straightforward. Continuous radar scans would have given NATO forces enough time to identify and destroy the SAM sites. To counter this, the Serbian operators employed a tactic of short, precision radar bursts. These bursts gave just enough information to locate and track the Nighthawk without alerting its onboard sensors. Combined with the knowledge of predictable flight paths, this technique allowed Serbian forces to pinpoint the aircraft's location without staying exposed for long. It was like flicking on a light switch on and off just long enough to see where your target was. Okay, next, engaging at close range. The decision to engage the Nighthawk at close range wasn't just tactical, it was a masterstroke of guerrilla-style adaptation against a technologically superior adversary. Once the Serbian forces pinpointed the predictable flight path of the stealth jet, they carefully positioned their surface-to-air missiles battery near the village of Budanovci. This location wasn't chosen by chance. It was strategically situated along the anticipated route that the Nighthawk would use on its return flight, ensuring the aircraft would pass directly through the kill zone. By deploying their SAM battery so close to the flight path, the Serbian forces forced the engagement into a narrow window of opportunity. The closer the SAM site was to the flight corridor, the less time the Nighthawk's pilot had to detect the threat and react. The Nighthawk's stealth capabilities 
made it nearly invisible to radar, but not immune to missile tracking systems once the radar lock was established. In this scenario, proximity left the aircraft with almost no time to evade. When the moment arrived, the SAM battery unleashed a carefully coordinated volley of missiles. Ultimately, the engagement at close range was a calculated gamble that paid off. The proximity of the ambush left the Nighthawk with no room for error and little chance to escape. Okay, next, luck played a role. While the Serbian military's tactics and preparation were undeniably effective, luck also played a significant role, as it does in most wartime scenarios. In this case, the combination of low frequency radar, precise timing, and anticipation created an environment where a single misstep could lead to disaster for the Nighthawk. The downing of the F-117 Nighthawk in March of 1999 was a watershed moment in modern military history. The incident sent shockwaves through the Alliance, shaking the perceptions of stealth aircraft as invincible assets on the battlefield. NATO's immediate response was to adapt its tactics, recognizing the dangers of predictable flight patterns. They began to randomize flight routes, altitudes, and mission timing to make it harder for adversaries to anticipate their movements. The reliance on stealth alone was no longer sufficient. Missions began incorporating more robust electronic countermeasures and diversified attack strategies to ensure survivability. In a broader sense, the shootdown forced a reevaluation of how advanced platforms were deployed in environments where even low tech adversaries could pose significant threats. For Serbia, the event was a morale booster and a point of national pride. Despite being outmatched technologically and outgunned by NATO's overwhelming air power, Serbian forces showed that clever tactics and adaptation could achieve the seemingly impossible. Colonel Zoltan Dani became a household name, praised for his ingenuity and his leadership. The Nighthawks' loss also catalyzed advancements in both stealth and counter-stealth technologies. NATO and its allies began exploring ways to make stealth aircraft even less detectable by improving coatings, materials, and design features to reduce their vulnerability to low-frequency radar. At the same time, adversaries redoubled their efforts to refine radar systems capable of detecting stealth platforms. This cat-and-mouse dynamic continues to shape the evolution of modern air combat today. The Nighthawks downing also served as a cautionary tale about over-reliance on any single technology. This story reminds me of that 2001 movie Behind Enemy Lines with Owen Wilson. I remember sitting in the movie theater and watching the shootdown scene in awe. Of course, as far as military accuracy goes, it's complete garbage, but it's an amazing scene for spectacle. That's it for today, friends. If you've learned something or were even mildly entertained, subscribing really helps the channel grow. And as always, glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes. Slava Ukraini.